The NCRT for many years has now been implementing and uh, rationalizing the syllabus that is being taught to students. Notably, they have removed many important chapters in the history of India and Indian politics. And that has created a storm. What are our students going to study? No Mughal courts, no response to what Gandhi's assassination led to, a lot of things like Nehru's policies, and also Cold War have been removed from the class 12th books of political science. Many things also removed from sociology. I have with me Irfan Habib sir who is a historian on the matter. Sir, when they remove all these things from the history, what kind of impact does it have on India's political history as well as uh, the understanding of it in the world order? See, see, for me, whatever is happening is happening on the expected lines. There is nothing very surprising for me because, I, because these things are happening for the last uh, few years. Yeah. Now, when you try to look for a sanitized version of the past, whether it is medieval past or recent past or contemporary India, you look for a past which suits your current politics. Then you are actually doing injustice with the past to, to uh, promote your own uh, present political concerns. So, which is absolutely absolute dishonesty, because you are playing with the past, you are playing with facts, you are you are depriving the young generation of of a, of a worldview, which they are they have a right to know. Oh, people have a right to know who killed Gandhi, what happened in India after Gandhi was assassinated, you know, who was implicated, you know, how people reacted, who was Nehru. You know? What was his uh, foreign policy? What was non-alignment? Why it was necessary in those times? Mm. Today it may sound very hollow, but in those times it had its own importance. Mm. So people have a right to know their their history. Mm. Similarly, you talk of Mughal India. No, if you if you believe that that Akbar is not needed, uh, people don't need to know. They were oppressors. They were barbarians. They came and killed Indians. They massacred people say all sorts of things, which is, which is again half-truth. But my concern is, how will you teach Shivaji? How will you teach Maharana Pratap? Where, is, where will be Haldigati? Where will be Totamal? If there is no Mughal court, if you don't teach anything about the Mughals, then where will Birbal go? Where will Totamal go? Where will Mansing go? You know? And who will fight Aurangzeb? No? When, because Shivaji won't be there. Mm. If Aurangzeb is not there, who, what will Shivaji do? Mm. So, so if you if you have that sort of ridiculous history, uh, which is totally uh, unconnected, mm. that is your view of history, mm. which is not a fact. History is connected, whether you like it or not. And history is history. History is not present. Medieval India or medieval world has its own value. It 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 uh, it had its own. Uh, compulsions, needs, you know, so we, we can't judge it from our present political needs. So even uh, books of political science wherein there's a uh, blurb on page number 12 of political science too that says that, uh, you know, for a brief period after Gandhi's assassination, the RSS, the Rashtra Samaj Seva Sangh was banned mm -hmm. and there were other organizations also that felt the burnt of this problem. Such things are also being edited out. And they are not even being mentioned in the fact that they are being edited out. So, what are the kind of implications do you see in the present world? Implication is very clear. Like you want to you you want to you want to clear RSS of every every doubt, every suspicion, you know, because because you know why you want to do it, and people also know why why, why it is being done, you know, which is which is which is very very silly because uh, if RSS was banned, the same RSS the ban was lifted after a few years. No, and you talk about lifting of the ban all the time. Mm. You don't talk about uh, the banning of RSS, why it was banned. Mm. So there was some suspicion why Sadar Patel needed RSS to be banned. Yeah? So it, even if you remove it from the syllabus, it will remain part of history. Mm. It, will, it will remain in history books. No? People will go to the libraries and read whatever they want to read. Mm. So it makes, it makes no sense. But obviously, you are creating a generation which will come up reading books, which will be sanitized. No? That is a great harm you are going to do. You are, you are creating a very 
intellectually emaciated generation. A generation which will be weak on so many grounds because it would be exposed to so many facts of history which are essential for us. Well, in the garb of nationalism or promoting nationalism, are we missing out on the important aspects no, of our history? No, the, the, these, these people are not even aware of. We don't need nationalism. We need patriotism. There is a difference. Hmm. Yeah? Why nationalism? Hmm. We need to be patriots. We need to be people loving our own country, hmm. not hating somebody else. Hmm. Yeah? Nationalism had its own role, which, which, had, it, which it played very well against the British. Hmm. After that, you need to be patriot. Every Indian need to be Indian first, not Hindu, Muslim or Christian, anybody. That's what we are trying to make each other out, uh, see each other as. So we need to be Indians, we need to be patriots. That is our concern. Why nationalists? Well, absolutely. And uh, in this, it's the loss for students from uh, our generation who were studying history and political science the way it was. What will our future generation study and understand about India and its uh, politics or its history with other elements removed from uh, completely from the textbooks and education happens to be a very basic foundation uh, for each and every individual in the country and if you remove such important aspects from your textbooks and education books then what does it leave us with is the real question with Pavan Kumar in New Delhi Milan Sharma for India Today.